Namaste beautiful you guys. Today we're having a quick chat together on the subject of overexercising and overtraining. It is a very important um, subject uh, in the fitness communities, even yoga communities, amongst young girls. Uh, so I wanted to, I have another video on the subject, but I wanted to touch base with you and just kind of give you a little bit of common sense advice about over-exercising. Now, I've developed interval yoga in a very particular way um, with a particular reason. I've developed it in order to heal my own adrenal um, fatigue and thyroid issues and other things that I had um, during that period of time uh, due to um, mold exposure and it worked beautifully but and I'm offering you those tools but at the same time I can see that a lot of you are still over training over exercising and um, I feel that I should every so often remind you to step back and go back to common sense always use your common sense always use your intuition uh, when it comes to training now uh, if you're over training you are going to know it even though you may not realize it you will know it if you're just um, paying attention to your body and just being mindful and aware over training will make you feel first of all that like something is kind of off you're gonna know that something is off something is not okay um, you may feel over exhausted have uh, sleeping disturbances you may um, feel very cold because you're uh, you're running you're um, you're becoming hypothyroid from overtraining um, you can have adrenal exhaustion and the signs of adrenal exhaustion most of you um, probably are familiar with them you will have um, higher cortisol levels, so stress hormone elevated, either excessive weight loss or maybe weight gain around the mid area, uh, difficulty losing weight, and uh, just the list goes on and on, and you will kind of know it because you're not going to be rested and relaxed and calm. You are going to feel kind of anxious, stressed out, sleeping disturbances, kind of feeling off, basically not feeling that sense of well-being that we're all looking for uh, so I the tools that I have offered you I feel that they're perfect but you can still overtrain yourself by your own choice I feel that the best thing you can do in order to train properly because not training at all is just as bad as overtraining is to take the classes that I've given you and rotate them do a 40 minute uh, interval yoga one day do a slower vinyasa the next day do interval training the next day that is just 10 minutes long then the next day do again 10 minute or 12 or 15 minute interval training but don't give it your all um then maybe one more day of a very like low in, low intensity interval training then a day of rest or like slow cardio say a, a very long walk two hour walk to some store and back or something like this just a a very low intensity cardio day and one day rest or one day even similar walking and stuff like that and then again that to me is a perfect schedule and you can mix and match it your body will tell you if you wake up sore but you have energy then you're going to do something that is not very intense but you're still using your energy if you wake up with low energy then you're gonna rest and so forth if sometimes your energy is stagnant because you haven't been exercising enough then you will do an interval training that is just gonna spike up your energy flush <laughs> fresh blood into your system flush you <laughs> with fresh prana always always use your common sense always use your common sense when it comes to exercise we live in a society where common sense is not encouraged it starts with school you enroll in school and there you're encouraged to repeat lessons as facts history is taught to us as facts and you're supposed to memorize them never question them never question their validity never uh, understand their 
meaning but just repeat them just learn to repeat them as facts and that basically essentially over time shuts down our uh, right brain we become just repeating machines zombies so from there on everybody is just thought to think that they don't know anything about their body it's always it's always we have to get feedback from outside we always have to go to a class and the teacher tells us how to align our body where nothing could be further from the truth the reason why i love what i do i feel so blessed to do what i do is because i personally am a person i personally am a person i'm a person who um who loves to um to learn um through my own experiences on my own uh through using individual um thinking even if i'm discovering something already discovered i still want to come to that conclusion on my own because i want to feel the what i'm doing as something that it um experiential so when you have a home practice you're essentially giving yourself the the best possibility of um, learning to understand your body if a teacher gives you feedback and you go oh yeah i understand that that's not bad but you're still not learning to trust your body to listen to your body and to feel your body now i have a lot of beginner classes with a lot of focus on alignment if you have been doing yoga for for years and you do some of my beginner classes still because that's um the poses suit you i do too much focus on alignment in those classes once you're not beginner you should feel the poses more so than keep thinking am I aligning my knee here and am, am I uh, flexing my muscle here and all of that becomes irrelevant because you have to shut down that part of your brain and start feeling things start understanding your body start feeling your body and flowing with your body because your body will guide you through the practice in a much more profound way and the best thing you can do is use my classes as tools to learn more about your body and to develop a better connection with your body in our society we're thought that uh they teach us uh that we're just those physical bodies and maybe spiritually we're taught that we have also a, a spiritual body and they're kind of separated there is connection between them which implies that they're separate but they're separated to where nothing could be further from the truth in order for you to advance your spiritual body you have to start understanding your physical body and vice versa you're here in this experience for a reason because if you were here to just understand your spiritual body you would never even if you're here to only understand your spiritual body you would not need a physical body to understand it you'll just be having a spiritual experience in some other dimension but since you're here given a physical body which is not strictly physical is absolutely interrelated and the same with your spiritual body you're integrating them and using one to advance the other and using the other to advance this one so i'm going on a tangent but you understand what i'm saying just learn to use your own feedback mechanism learn to use your own intuition because in our society with we we're thought that somehow rational thinking is way superior than in in intuition and that is so funny because i see so many people that think that intelligence comes from logical rational thinking that is just the first step you still have to get you have to have rational thinking of course but that is just your first step if you don't have any idea about intuition then you're not even starting on the path of true intelligence so we're just taking small steps to in using physicality to expand our mind and understand our body and expand our spirituality uh, maybe that's a new idea to some of you but that is the fact now as far as um overtraining there is a, uh, a lot a lot of girls i would say most girls that 
are into yoga and come to training, most young girls in general have been exposed to some level of anorexia and I almost feel that that's kind of a setup in by society. You're not alone. Most uh, girls have struggled with those uh, issues because I feel that society is set up that way where we, uh, we grow up eating the wrong diet, then we grow up with the wrong images, then we grow up with the wrong uh, connection to uh, self and from there it, it becomes such a mess that it, it has to it has to break out in some way because we grow up thinking either we are not special or we're super special and we're princesses and that that never will be proven true in real society in real world so there is so much contradiction that the psyche has to deal with and so much self-esteem issues because we're just not understanding this physical body we're just not getting it and that um that basically ends up manifesting itself in certain either physical disorder eating disorder some some form of um psychological behavior that is considered disordered behavior I would say it's just a learning curve for a lot of you as long as you're willing to learn and grow and let go of the hang-ups, the mental hang-ups, you can move forward. Of course, that's not always possible, but for an average person it is. There is very extreme cases where obviously a lot of special attention and special help is needed. But in, in most cases, self-correction I believe is possible and it's obviously the highest route, the best route so um so what i'm trying to um basically uh, bring across in this video about overtraining and over exercising even though it's a big roundabout is to just trust your body and develop intuition and keep developing intuition and not overthink things don't overthink poses after a while when you're a beginner, of course, you have to um, focus on alignment, but you can be a beginner for years and years. Once you understand basic alignment, you start. You have to start being guided by your breath and, and feeling the poses, moving through the poses, because your body will tell you how to align much better than um, just uh, textbook alignment. So start listening to your body. Cut back on exercise if you're suspecting that you're over-exercising. Don't abuse your body. Don't beat your body down. Because ultimately, if you're not getting results or if you're not feeling good, then there's no point in it. If you're feeling good, then this video obviously is not for you. Uh, but um, if you're not feeling good, if you're feeling tired and um, if you have... Um, injuries, um, um, recurrent injuries, uh, colds, flu, immune system uh, issues, um, those are all um, indicators of something going wrong. It, it, of course, it's not just exercising, could be your diet, could be your mental patterns and so forth, uh, but we're focusing here and for the purposes of this video on the exercising portion of it. So if you're doing far too many classes, you're going to have to mix it up. Don't overcorrect by doing nothing doing too much and then nothing just vary uh, i i consider that one class of 40 minutes just kind of my classic interval yoga class once or twice a week is good one longer class of vinyasa they're pretty tiring those classes too so once a week a longer vinyasa stretchy vinyasa is also enough two or three uh, interval training classes uh, that I have a lot of them on my channel and on my membership. Um, so many in, in such variation and with different focus and with they're all fun. Use them with different level of intensity within your own body. So uh, I would like you to do one to two classes where you give it almost your all, like 90% or 80%, and then one or two interval training classes where you're just um, kind of giving it 50% of your maximum effort. You're just doing them, but you're not pushing too fast, too strong, too hard, uh, and so forth. You are doing them because you are still getting your blood pumping, 
your alignment is fine you're not slacking in alignment you're just slacking how much force you uh, push forward um, that's my perfect uh, schedule I've been able to heal myself through such through a similar schedule if I feel that a, a very long vinyasa feels not appropriate for me that week I would skip that of course you don't have to do everything every week vary it be very intuitive with you, uh, with your training I think most of you that are here anyways watching this video you are already an intuitive person or you have that capacity because you are already self-guided you're self-driven you want to learn you are autodidactic you can learn from verbal and visual cues um, because you are starting to tune in rather than keep looking for for feedback out and that is your uh you, your best bet you're not you're always going to learn more even with creativity for me when i want to create new things and when i want to discover new things within anything uh, in my mind i have to turn off any knowledge from other people because that blocks my own knowledge uh, my own deeper inner knowledge my own creativity so whenever i want to create something i don't look for ideas from other people i don't i don't get inspiration from other people i turn everything off i don't read i don't watch anything that's in that area of uh, knowledge i can watch something in a different um um field uh, but i just uh, i i just want to turn all kinds of distractions and ideas off so ideas come from somewhere from here somewhere from here um so that is, that is my main point here intuitive training that is my main point intuitive training trusting your body trusting the the process of uh, um how you live your life the process of living how how you intuit your life um that is absolutely the best skill you can learn that's why i consider what i do so uh, i'm so grateful to be doing what i do because it's not just exercise it's just us learning far more about ourselves than just how we exercise and it's far more than getting a perky butt or strong core or uh, in s s being fit which are amazing benefits uh, i have to say that we that is a must we have to the way we have to maintain our soul and spirituality the same way we have to maintain the body it's just a spiritual to take care of your body and have a little bit of vanity not some form of exaggerated crazy vanity just to have some form of balanced attitude towards your physical looks and your spiritual looks uh, you have to maintain your spiritual hygiene and your physical hygiene um, and in our society I think I will finish with uh, that in our society we are just not in any way encouraged to express ourselves truly so there is we're just uh, extremely suppressed um, I've learned that through years of teaching that breathing is one of the most embarrassing things people would do in public. They just don't want to breathe in a loud way, in a, in a way where there is like depth in their breathing. They're just shallow breathers and just very shy about, about self-expression. And that is because we're not encouraged to be in touch with who we are. In society and you have to find that encouragement within yourself you have to break out of your uh, societal um, conditioning and start finding those things within yourself those permissions within yourself and even the spiritual pseudo pseudo spiritual communities they don't encourage any form of self-expression other than some form of repressed um, peacefulness of passive aggressive peacefulness that's what i see in a lot of the spiritual communities people just do not feel authentic they just feel very um you know the word the common used word is fake but they just use very repressed and there is this just kind of passive aggressive hippie peacefulness um 
Self-expression is discouraged, uh, anger is considered a bad emotion, sadness is considered a bad emotion. You can be hitting pillows in some of those communities though, but there is some form of imbalance of how we are encouraged to express who we are and there is so much, um, there is so much restriction, um, <laughs> there is so much restriction of how we are supposed to express ourselves. This is not appropriate, that's not appropriate, most things are not appropriate. You shouldn't express any straightforwardness, any um, anger, grief, um, aggression, all those are bad, so bad, you can't do that. So we're just repressing everything. We are only supposed to be mildly happy and uh, polite and that just creates such an inauthentic society and such inauthentic communication and such inauthentic expression of who we are that most of our emotions get just repressed and yeah we go to yoga to just within ourselves express it but you have to give yourself the permission to understand that most emotions are there for a reason and you're okay moving through them and i've given myself that permission that if people do not want to accept me uh, uh, with my emotions we're just not on the same level of understanding life if uh, for someone uh, uh, for example if i'm going to uh, straight be very straightforward and express myself in a very direct way in conflict and to someone that's not spiritual we're not talking the same language because there is no way i'm gonna correct something that i i express very authentically through my from my core and if for some that's inappropriate then we're not communicating on the same level of emotional awareness so give yourself the permission to to be authentic and not apologetic about things that maybe in society are not um, um, uh, encouraged. Now, when I say um, uh, anger, people don't understand that word very well. I don't mean ever in any situation being disrespectful towards any being, towards any being. I'm meaning having appropriate reaction to uh, things that are directed towards you. So. This video is not just about over-exercising, it's really, I should title it <laughs> something along the lines uh, with uh, developing your intuition and awareness and self-guided growth, something along those lines, uh, but it is a cheat chat chat video i woke up early this morning so here we have a chat video about over exercising i gave you a little bit of um practical advice of how to line up your uh workouts um definitely do not beat your body down definitely do not beat your body down there is absolutely no reason to over exercise you will be uh, pretty muscular, pretty lean, uh, in pretty good shape, with very good cardiovascular capacity, with not that much a day. Um, I do love movement though, so even if I exercise a little bit uh, intensely, um, uh, like say if, uh, right now my exercise is completely different, but even now I uh, still vary it, I still uh, add slow cardio or slow super slow cardio such as walks and such and I'll have I would do weighted squats and lunges or some yoga 20 minutes a day and so forth I would just still be very active but not over active and not ex um, to the point of exertion and exhaustion that's one of the ways to know that you're over exercising once you finish a workout are you Quirky? Are you feeling um, energized or are you feeling a little drained? Are you exhausted? Did you overdo it? It's pretty... The thing about the over-exercising is very simple. There is not much science... You don't need science and you don't need like big cues and big ar to read big articles and listen to big videos to know if you're over-exercising. You kind of should know it. How, how do you feel right after an exercise? That's your, your cue. Um, are you in good shape? Uh, are you too hungry or do you have absolutely no hunger due to how you exercise? 
Um, all of those things are cues that you are, if you're in balance or out of balance. And when you're out of balance, um, you and only you have to take yourself back to balance. You can't rely on anyone else. You can't keep asking the same question over and over. Uh, people again, how do I do that? It, um, most of the questions people ask, they know the answer for it. So when you ask the question, you generally, oftentimes when you ask me a question, you generally have the answer included within the question. Start honoring your body and implementing those answers that you deep in your soul know are <laughs> what you need. Um, all right, I can keep going forever, but and if you're interested in more videos on the subject of um, intelligent training, intuitive training, intuitively growing and understanding your body, intuitive fitness, um, exercising, over-exercising in such uh, subjects, let me know and we'll chat again very soon. Namaste.